Hey guys, welcome back to creating your very own Minecraft animation, Andrew here. And uh, this is where we left off, we had just imported this mesh into Maya. And this is probably a good stage to save out our project so far, so we'll go File, Save Scene As, and we will find that project again, Island, boom. And I'm just going to create a new folder called Maya Scenes, open that up, and Project Version 01, Cool Beans. Okay, so I should probably explain how this mesh works. Each uh, object type or each block type is its own mesh, so you can see we select all the leaves, all the grass, etc. First thing I'm going to do is select the vines. I'm actually going to delete those. I didn't really want those there. Um, so get those out of there. The next thing I'm going to do is start to separate these trees. So as you can see, when I select the trunks, all of the other trunks are selected. So what I'm going to do is right click on the trunk mesh. I'm going to select face and then I'm going to draw a box around this whole trunk so now we have all the faces of that trunk selected and I'm going to go to the mm, the um, polygons menu set so under this drop down up here polygons select mesh and extract and what this is going to do now if I right click this mesh and go back to object mode is now you can see we can select this trunk as a separate object to these other trunks we're going to do the same thing again for this one. We can right click the mesh, go to face, again, drawing around all of these faces we'd like to extract. And we can uh, go back up to here, mesh, extract again, or the keyboard shortcut for that in Maya to just repeat the last action is G. So just press G on the keyboard. And one more time, selecting these faces. Oops. Face, drawing out. And G. So now we should have one, two, three separate trunks. And we're going to do the same thing again for the leaves. So selecting the leaves, draw out the faces. Okay, and what happens here if you select some faces you want to get rid of? If you hold down Control and then draw a new selection, it'll actually get rid of that selection. There's some on the top here as well. Okay, and I'm just going to hit G again. Faces. Control select these, I don't want those faces. G, last time. Select and G. Okay, and now you should see that we have our own groups for each of these elements. What we ha now have to do is combine these. So right click, go back to object mode. I'm going to select the trunk, shift, select the leaves on the top, and I'm going to go back up to mesh and hit combine. And this has created a new mesh out of these two uh, sub-objects that we separated before. And I'm going to take this opportunity to rename this Tree01. I'm going to do the same for these two. Shift selecting them both. I can just hit the G key to combine them again. And I'll call this Tree02. And again for the last one, G to combine Tree03. And now you can see we have Tree1, 2 and 3 as separated meshes. And uh, if you wanted to animate, say, for instance, a windmill spinning or uh, you know, a water wheel or anything else and you need to separate the mesh, this is how you do it. You just separate the mesh um, from the different groups and then you can just combine it together however you'd like to use it. Okay, so you can see now, if we press the Move tool, which is over here, you can see that the... or sorry, the W key is the shortcut on the keyboard for move. You can see when we move this, the pivot point is actually still here at the origin of the world. And what we want to do is we want to select the um, pivot point to be the very base of this tree so that when it grows, it happens from the bottom. So the way we can do this is press the insert key on our keyboard, which will change it to pivot point. And then again, we can just drag this pivot point so that it's in the middle of our tree. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but we can just roughly move this down to the bottom there. I'll do this for my other trees as well. So with the insert key still selected, dragging this down into place. Our last tree, cross. 
and down to the bottom. Okay, and then we can press the insert key again to exit that tool. And now what you can see, if I press the scale button, which is just under here, or the R key on the keyboard, and when I scale this now, it's scaling from the bottom. Control Z to undo that. Okay, so now we have our trees, our mesh separated, and it's named. The next thing I'm going to do is actually create the ocean plane here. So, uh, from the toolbar at the top, create polygon primitives, and I'm going to create a plane. Now, that's actually really small. It's at the origin again. So, what we can do is uh, press R to enter your scale tool if it's not already selected. And we can scale this up to be quite large because, remember, this is going to be our ocean. W key to move it. And we will just put this down roughly so that the sand is just showing something like that. And we can rename this to just be Ocean Plane. Great. The next thing I want to do is actually just animate these trees. So, to animate them growing, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my time, uh, time range down the bottom here. So this is in frames per second. So at the moment I have a thousand. Yours might be different. Using this second selection box, I'm going to make this animation 150 frames long. Your time slider, you can just click to scrub through the time here. Should be at one already. I'm going to um, put it back to one if it's not. And I'm going to select the scale X and then shift select the scale Z, which is going to select all of these scales in the left, the forward and the up direction uh, if you're not familiar with it already and right click on this and hit key selected. And what this is going to do is it's going to set a key here. Change these values to zero because we want it to start off small and then I'm going to move forward 25 seconds uh, sorry 25 frames or about one second and then I'm going to select all these values and enter one. So now when we scrub through the timeline we can see this tree starts off and grows up. I'm going to do the same for these other trees, but I'm going to start at, um, at 10 this time, so I can just select these values again, hit 0, and then I can key the selected, and then I can move forward 25 frames, again, enter a value of 1. So now you can see our tree on the right scales first, and then our tree on the middle scales up just afterwards. Lastly with this tree, again I can move to frame 20, selecting these values, right key, right, right click I should say, key selected, we'll set this to 0, and then again 25 on, set this to 1. Okay, looking good. So this is what we have so far. Nice. The only thing I want to do now is actually animate these trees, sort of bending and wobbling up, so I'll show you an example with one tree and then hopefully you guys can follow along and do this for the other two trees in your own time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is press the 4 key on the keyboard or alternatively you can press this little box here to enter wireframe view. With this tree selected, I'm going to go to the animation menu set by selecting animation here or F2 on the keyboard and I'm going to go to animate, sorry, create deformers, nonlinear and I'm going to use a bend. What this is going to do now, we can, um, in our channel box, there will be a new bend input. If we select the curvature, um, by the way, if you want to adjust any of these um, parameters by scrolling through them, you select the name and then middle click in the viewport and you can actually see as I scrub left and right, that adjusts how much it bends. Okay, this isn't quite what we want though, we want it to bend from the bottom. So what I'm going to do, Control z to undo that, I'm going to select the low bound to 0. Okay, so that way it starts from the top. I'm going to select this, um, this bend line here in the middle, and move this down to my base. Again, this doesn't need to really be exact. Selecting this bend input again, I'm going to select the high bound to 2. So now, instead of being uh, centered in the middle, it's centered at the bottom, and the bend actually extends the whole way up the tree. If we select this curvature again, middle mouse drag, we can see the whole tree is actually deforming left to right. 
Great. And so now it's a simple case of animating this. We're going to go to frame 1, which is when it starts. We're going to set this curvature to something like 5. And we're going to click the curvature, right click, key select it. And I'm going to move forward 10 frames. Set this curvature back to something like 3. Ooh, I should do minus 3. Moving forward 10 frames again. I'm going to set this to 1, or well, maybe that's a little extreme, maybe 0 0.1. And you can see what this is doing is each time it's sort of bending left to right. So it's going a minus value, then a positive value, and then back up. Again, moving 10 frames forward, I'm going to set this to minus 0 0.1. And then finally, only 5 frames forward, I'm going to set this to 0. So now what you can see as we scrub through here, is that our tree sort of bends up and bends into place there. Awesome. So by hitting the 6 on the uh, number pad, I can go back into the textured view and I can play through this animation. Nice. So if you guys would like to, um, you guys feel free to go ahead, do this for num trees number 2 and 3. I'm going to do that myself and uh, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've animated those out. Here's the result. So you can see our trees bending up there. And this is uh, quite a stylized form of animation. You wouldn't necessarily see this in real life, but I think it looks interesting. Okay. And what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to come in and we're actually going to animate a fireplace, which is happening down here inside these logs. And this is a really nice, uh, simple one-click fire option set that Maya has. Uh, we want it to burn from this very top face of the wood in the middle. So we're going to use the same method of extracting the mesh we did before. So selecting this wood, right click, go to face. We're going to just select this top face only and we're going to go again to the polygons menu set or F3 and we're going to hit mesh and extract. And now what we should have is our very own face here. If I um, move this you can see that it is separated from everything else. And all we need to do now is uh, go to the Dynamics menu set, or F5 on the keyboard, and we can go to the Effects menu and simply click Create Fire. This is a really nice tool you can use straight out of the box. I'm going to go back to the start of my animation and hit Play. And you can see already there's uh, little fire particles coming off that. And that's really all there is to it. It's quite a nice effect, and we'll look at maybe tweaking that if we need to a bit later on when we look at rendering. Okay guys, that's about all for now. That's the, um, the majority of the animation done. Uh, we'll look at sort of fixing these textures and starting to get some lights and rendering happening in the next lesson. I'll see you then.